Hey everybody, it is coffee time. So grab your coffee or your iced tea. We're drinking coffee tonight. And we're going to um, keep talking about the parables of the sower and the seed. Brother Harwood's going to be here to uh, explain all that to us. And one thing before we get started, I would like to, for everybody that calls themselves a Christian and the ones that don't, please get out and vote. We have so much to vote on for the right things this, this election, and we have to speak out. What is that saying? Uh, evil takes over when good men do nothing. It's just a saying. It's not scriptural, but anyway, everybody vote. Watch the debates and yeah, evil takes over. When I know when the evil nothing. is in, in control, control that the people mourn, and when the righteous reign, the people rejoice. That that's I think right. That's, that's in Kings. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, guys, we're going to get started on this. We hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> Please don't forget to share. Someone you know may need this very word. That, that young girl. Yeah, we need to pray for this. We've got, what was her name? I don't know. Um, she didn't say her name. 16, 16 years old at Baylor <clears throat> Hospital with some sort of skin disease. Yes. Yeah, her heart yeah, and her heart quit beating for. 30, 38 seconds, something, something like that. There's somebody else. There's somebody else too. We're trying to get all that. <laughs> um, um, there was somebody else I knew that needed prayer, and I can't think of. Well, the Lord knows. The Lord knows. God yes. knows. I can't remember, but yes, we did say that. We did. Um, um, Sherry Motes, my friend Sherry, she got a diagnosis of um, spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing of the spine. Mm -hmm. The 18th, she has to go for surgery for that, so let's remember her. Um, Samantha got a praise report. She, however, does have COVID, so let's remember her Samantha. in prayer. Yes, she's got COVID. So we're praying, we gotta pray for that, and Remember my bunch. Remember my, my family. And... Remember my kids. Remember my dog. Remember them all. They all need Jesus' help. And uh, I'm just thankful for God being in, in me and me having a wonderful life. I have a wonderful life in the Lord. And um, I'm happy. Uh, the Bible said He'll give you joy. And in the Holy Ghost, and I'm just thankful that He loves me, and it never changes. No, it doesn't. It happen. never, from day by day by day. I know one thing we can wake up and know that God loves you, and He loves us. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. never changes. And you can call upon the Lord any time, day or night, any day of the week, night, morning hours, and He's there. He's there. And Kelly. So we got a lot to pray about, but let's also today give thanks for what God is doing. You know, we are needy people, but God is a wonderful God that supplies all our needs mm -hmm. according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank You for what You've done this week. Lord, we thank you for what you have done in the hospital for this 16-year-old girl, Lord. You know everything about her. You know all the situations in her life, physically, spiritually, mentally, whatever. We ask that you touch her today. Father, let, let the doctors be able to figure out what's wrong with her skin, Lord, with her situation, with everything. And I pray today, God, that you touch Kelly. Lord, I pray for all these requests. Lord, you know every one of them. Lord God, most of all, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are in all of our lives. You never change. Your love is the same. You, your love has never been diminished in any of our lives. And Lord, it seems like the more hell comes against us, 
Your grace is so much greater. Your love, the Holy Ghost, just steps in and just takes over when it seems like we can't do another thing, can't take another step. He leads and guides us into all truth. I thank you, Lord, for who you are today. I ask that you minister in this teaching today and the word that we're given. Let it go forth and minister. And God, that there's somebody, if they're out there, and they're going through something, let this word be an answer to their situation, their problem. And let the Holy Spirit of God take your word, Father, and bring victory into some souls today. In Jesus' name. Anoint us, Lord, as I know you are. And thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to turn this band off over here. Excuse me, folks. <coughs> so I'm still a little creepy and snotty, but they allowed me to come and share my germs. <laughs> Maybe they're not catching it. We hope. In the 13th chapter of St. Matthew, starting with hey, the first Matthew. verse, I, I love the... Uh, writings where Jesus is in them. Yeah. The Bible talks about, he's talk, going to be talking about the parable of the sower. It says in the first verse, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Okay. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. When he sowed, some, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth, and when the sun was come up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some of the seed fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and it choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, the Bible says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not shall not perceive. In other words, it wasn't time for them to know this. Right. Have you ever, and I'll stop, let me, I've had the Holy Ghost. I've read the Word of God. And in a time when I needed that scripture, I've read it over and the Holy Ghost slaps it right in front of my face. Brought the understanding. And brought the understanding to me. And I thought, I've read this a hundred times. Right. And now I've needed that. And it's happened. God's shown it to me, the revelation of that verse. Mm -hmm. 
That's way, why, what the Word does. The Holy Ghost, when He leads and guides you in all truth. If we understood this Bible completely, it, word for word, it would be more than we could understand. Amen. It would be more than what we could fathom. That's why we read in the Holy Ghost at times, he will let us see a verse and it'll stand out because we're going through something right. that that verse gives us an answer for. Right. Okay? Now, he said, For whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy by Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Jesus picked his disciples. Yes, he did. He went and picked them. Simon Peter... He was cleaning nets, cleaning the boat. Jesus comes by and said, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. Something about the words that he spoke and the way the Spirit of God touched him, he immediately, yes. he had a calling. He had a, yes, it was an anointing in his life that he had never felt. And even his wife, knew that he had to go and, and be a disciple of Christ. Right. Okay? That's what he was telling them. You see and you know because you've been with me. I've taught you my word. And you understand this. But the people that was here that he was reading, that a lot of them come just to see the healings. Mm -hmm. A lot of them come to see what he was going to do. But they didn't want to live the life. Right. They wanted Jesus to do something for them. But it was like a uh, circus event. Right. Let's see what he's going to pull out of the hat mm -hmm. today. Right, right. But the disciples, they were eating the word of God and drinking in the spirit the heavenly wine. And they wanted more and he was giving it to them. Okay? I hope you're understanding this. Well, in 20, it starts explaining us. Yes, animals. yes, yes, it does. Okay. In 18, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. He's going to start explaining the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Yes. Have you ever seen people every time there was a revival or there was a, a series of meetings, they would come for that? Mm -hmm. Or if God was really starting to move, they wanted to go see what was going on. There's a wayside. Not necessarily being a part of it, but yeah. we want to see what's happened. They wanted to go yes. see what happened. This was the wayside crowd. Mm -hmm. And then when the revival was over, you didn't see them till the next one. Right. They never got rooted and grounded, and they went all their life doing that. Okay? But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, 
and Anna with joy received it, yet he hath not rooted in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arose because of the word, by and by he is offended. Yeah. In other words, God, why did you let this happen to me? Exactly. Blaming God. Mm -hmm. You said you would always be with me and never leave me and forsake me and that your grace is sufficient to keep me against anything and I'm in hell right now and where are you? This is your fault. And this is kind of like what we were talking about when somebody gets saved but they don't get rooted in the Word. Yes. Right. You don't have those roots. Then the first little thing that comes yes. along and, and things will come along. Yes. The devil will do whatever he can to snatch you yes. back. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and then you you blame God or you say, well, God that, doesn't exist. Yeah. I just got saved. I asked Jesus to be my Savior. Why would I have all this happening? Yeah, today? if that if God's what He says He yeah. is, why then why is the devil stronger than God? Right. I've had I've right. had people ask me that, and that's a lie of the devil. Yeah. Right and they say, well, if God's so strong, why is the devil doing? Why is He letting the devil do all this to me? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you need daily to study the word, to yes. pray. And listen, if you've just got saved, find you a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church to go to. Yes. Now listen to me. I'm getting ready. Probably we're going to have problems over this. I don't want no social club to go to. I want where if I'm going to the house of God, I want the Holy Ghost to have his way. We've got enough problems out in the world that we're having to deal with, but we need to be able to come to the house of God and, and get fed by the minister delivering the word and the Holy Spirit moving and touching and, and giving us strength and guidance on how to handle our situations. Okay? And you will never find a perfect church. No, because so when you go excuses, in, it ain't perfect. Exactly. All your excuses about... Oh, there's, I think, nothing but a bunch of hypocrites there. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. You're never, ever going to find a church with all perfect people no, in it. No, So don't even come at me with that excuse. No, but <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Yeah. You, you, you don't go to a church where the Holy Ghost is not welcome. Right. If you, if you go to a, a, by a church... And the Holy Ghost is not moving in that church. And the Word of God, you can say, well, how do we know? If you've got Christ in you, you're going to feel the anointing from the pulpit. Uh, yes. You're going to feel the anointing in the singing. You're going to feel the anointing in the praying. And their mind is going to be... You remember when we was kids and we went to church and we started going to church and serving God? Everybody's main thing was to get someone saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Pray. I'm going to try to get my brother or my sister or my uncle or my aunt get get them here. If I can get them here, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost can grip them and convict them and get them saved. Right. right. Okay. And used two years ago, when a sinner knew a fence coming to the house of God, something was there's either going to have to walk out on Jesus or there's going to end up going to the altar. Right. Because it was that much. Conviction in the I services. I have been in service before and been under such conviction. I could not make myself not go. Yeah, yeah. I had to go to the altar. Yes. There's nothing wrong going to the altar and praying. There's nothing yeah. wrong having a prayer meeting. No. What's wrong is when we are so wrapped up in the pleasures of doing things that's not centered around Christ. Yeah. And we become a social club. Well, it's more important to have a, a ladies' club or a kids' club. And I don't have nothing wrong with that if Christ is the center. But when we get wrapped up where it's all about us and not, not about him, we become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Right. Exactly. Let's let Christ get back into the altar of the church again and, and draw us with the Spirit of God and get back in our hearts. Right, and take and take the Holy Spirit with you <coughs> yes. where you go. Yes. And focus 
on what you're really there for. You're there to be fed. Yes. You're there to be rooted in the Word, to lay down some roots so that you can grow and be stronger in the Lord. Yes. Jesus said his house would be known as a house of prayer. That means mm -hmm. interacting with God. Yeah. That, you know, we don't go for any other reason but to worship, praise Him, and worship Him. That's right. Yes. Okay. Let me get on this real quick. I believe I was in the 22nd verse, wasn't it? 22nd, yes. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. In other words, he got deceived by, by the enemy. Mm -hmm. Okay. But paying attention. That's right. <laughs> but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let me explain that real quick. I've had people say, well, then why did one get do a hundredfold, one sixty, and one thirty? Because when you start serving God, God can't make you grow. He stands at your heart. He wants to do for you the best that can possibly be done. But you're the one that chooses the hundredfold. You're the one that chooses, you're the one that's watering your harvest right. to, and make sure that I've got to study the word and I need to get in, get all I can get from God's word and, and be willing to do all I can do for the ministry of God and for God to, to see if I can win souls. That is working in the kingdom. Yeah. And that's when it's harvest time, what you've done with the seed that's been, you've planted in your heart, that's been planted in your heart, that's the harvest you're going to receive. Right. Yeah. Some people seem like they God's doing so much more in their life than others. There was a sacrifice there. They gave back to God. They gave their all to the Lord and said, Use me, Jesus. Let your anointing, Lord, use me. Let me be a witness to people where I live, where I work. Let me be a dynamo for you. Open doors for me. That is... Is going to bring so that he can be glorified. Yes, so he can be glorified. That will bring a greater harvest. Yeah. The seed can be sowed, and you say, "Well, let the rain do it all." <laughs> well, you're going to get a harvest, but it ain't going to be much. Right. But if you get out and you work the ground and you till it, mm -hmm. and you make sure that no thorns and thistles gets to, to destroy the seed. Mm -hmm. and, and that the seed is in good ground and you make sure that it's it's clean and pure and stays that way, you're going to have a harvest of a hundredfold. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus plants the word, but what you do with that is upon you. Right. So you get in there and you start letting God and his word work in your life. And watch the harvest come, because it will come. Yes, it will. Okay, now, and here we go. Another parable he put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Wow. Mm -hmm. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Tares are weeds. Yeah. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you'll root up also the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat 
into my barn. Here we go again. What we do with the word in our heart. What we allow the enemy to come in and plant seeds of deceitfulness and, and confusion. And if, I'll tell you what's worse than not knowing the word is starting to listen to someone teach the word and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. They are teaching and they're teaching their thoughts, their theories. The word has to be backed up with the word. Right. What you say has to be backed up. With yes, the when you're speaking, let the word say that's what my word says. Jesus wants us to deliver the truth. Okay, I can bring the truth to you and say the Lord said this. Now, it's up to you to stay in the word and make sure the devil don't put the thoughts in your mind or start saying, well, if God's stronger than the devil, then why has he done this and start planting deceitful things in your heart? Right. And then when the Lord wants to bless you, you've got all this garbage in your mind and in your spirit, and therefore, you got a mess on your hands. Exactly. When he says, I will heal you, yeah, but what? What about you need to go to the doctor and let him see what he can do first. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing wrong with doctors. I thank God I've got doctors. But if God heals me, I know when I'm healed. Right. And I don't need the devil to say, what if you're not healed? I know when I've been touched by the master. I know when there's been a divine appointment of the Spirit of God in my heart, in my life, and He does a miracle in my life. I know I don't have to have someone tell me. Right. But my flesh, your flesh, is an enemy against the Word of God. Yeah, it is. The Bible says that. Yes, and, and we got to recognize when the enemy comes in and starts... Our, we got to keep our flesh under subjection to the Spirit daily. Mm -hmm. The Bible says to. And just. To and when I read this, it spoke to me like that old Sunday school song Be careful, little ears, what you yes, see. Yes, yes. Be exactly careful, little right. eyes, what you see. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What you say. Yes. When, when you speak, you're planting a seed. Yes. Plant seeds of life. Yes. Not seeds of curses. I mean, There's a God from up above looking down yes. with peace and love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Yes. And the Bible also says to shun the very appearance of evil. Yes. And we have to know what evil looks like. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's not of God. <laughs> yeah. And we turn the channel or we turn the radio off or whatever we have to turn off, even whatever, even yeah. people. I mean, we can't. We have to protect our spirits. Yes. If we get around, if we go into a bar, well, guess what? Eventually, we're going to start drinking, and that's it. We have to stay away from the things Shun God tells us. Shun the very appearance. Yes. That's it. Shun the very yes. appearance. And our sheep, God says his sheep knows his voice. And another they will not follow. His sheep won't follow. Exactly. They know it's wrong. They'll stay away from it. Right. Or they're supposed to. That's exactly right. And, uh, yeah, and so when Jesus done this, he done it for a reason, because he loves us. Right. And it's, and where they did not want to accept the word, you do, or you wouldn't be watching this today. Right. You want to accept the word, you're ready to hear the word, and you've heard it today. The choice is yours. What are you going to do with the seed that's been planted in your heart through the reading of the word, the hearing of the word, the spirit of God ministering to you in times past and you remembering when he touched you when you needed his touch. Amen. There was an individual here not long ago. We had had uh, a program we had done here. And I got a telephone call about 1230 at night the next night. And there was an individual who said, I've got a spirit, a voice telling me to end it. Oh, no. And in their life. In their life right oh, then. Said, and, and 
said, I've got a gun. Mm -hmm. And I and I said, no, 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 no. I said, uh, you can't do that. And I prayed with them. I told them what, what I felt like God would have me tell them. And they're still alive. Yeah. Praise God. But this spirit of God will bring new life to you. It will take the discouragement where it looks like it's not ever going to get any better. Mm -hmm. And it will turn your life around. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Right. No man, no man can go under the Father but through him. Amen. He wasn't just a prophet. He wasn't just a teacher. He is the Savior of this world, and he still is today. He will always be. He's my Savior, my healer, my provision. Oh, he's my armor. He's everything to me. Amen. Amen. And he, he's my all in all. That old song, he is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything, both great and small. He gave his life for me. Made everything new. He is my everything. Now how about you? Ain't bad for a 70-year-old man, is it? No. <laughs> I keep saying when I hit my teeth, I'm going to aggravate everybody with my singing. I haven't been able to sing. But I, I'm here to years. tell you, he <laughs> is your everything. Let him yes, be. He is. When you finally realize he's everything that you've got, Everything that you right. need, everything you're going to need, there are something that's going to turn in you. Yes. There's going to be things that's going to change. Your mindset's going to change. When you finally call on him for everything, I get up in the morning when I wake up. People say, what do you do? I say, Lord, what are we going to do today? Right. Where, where are we going today? What are you going to I go into businesses every day, and I'll walk in, and someone, if they hold the door, I'll say, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Why are you saying that? Because the Bible said if somebody does one of his children good, mm -hmm. that to bless them. We're supposed to tell them that God loves them. Oh, I, I, listen, I pray for people. I tell about yeah. how God, I walked into the bank the other day. Tellers were standing there, and I said, it's a wonderful day to be alive. And they look at me, and they said, yep. And I said, not bad for a 70-year-old man, is it? And this one lady said, you're 70? You really don't look? And I said, yeah. I said, thank you, man. But I, I said, I know how old I am, but I said, I've got Jesus in me. And that's what makes me youthful. In a few more months, he won't worry about being 70. <laughs> <laughs> Says the old one to the younger one. <laughs> well, right. we we got to keep her humble by letting her know she's older than us. But here's the thing, folks. Jesus, all this, he has sowed in our lives and we are reaping what was sowed. Mm -hmm. What you reap is what you take care of. True. Isn't that something? We don't like to hear that. But your your reaping is what you're taking care of in your field right now. Yeah. Isn't that good? That's good. But that's what the yeah. Lord's told us. What He's planted in your in your life. Take care of it, cherish it, honor it, protect it. Because when harvest time comes, how you treat the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the things He's put in your life is going to be the reaping. Mm -hmm. Amen. And ladies, yes. say something. I just, I could keep talking still, but I'm not. Go ahead and you'd Go say ahead, something. Jerry. I talk enough what for all think, of you. Sister? I think that we, some people uh, think when they get saved, everything's going to be hunky-dory. It's not. Right. We're in a spiritual battle, and we have to remember the the armor of God and we need to wear that every day because we are on a battlefield. Yes. And yes, the devil can strike us, but the Lord says to hold up your shield of faith. 
Have faith in God no matter <coughs> what you're going through because I promise you, God promises, He will get you through it and yes. you will have a testimony like no other. That's well, the difference between that's the difference between somebody that's not a Christian and somebody that is. Yes. We all have the same problems. Yes, we do. The difference is is we have Christ we to back take, us up, we, to carry yes, us through this. To stop the enemy. We don't have to go through it by ourselves. Eighth Amen. chapter of the book of Romans, first verse, There is now for no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of Christ, of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I don't have to go by what the devil says anymore. When he comes in and says, you're so sick, I say, you're a liar. By his stripes, you know what Jesus done? He was our perfect example. The enemy came to him when he is being tempted. And all Jesus would say is, Satan, it's written. Satan, it is written. Satan, it is written. When the devil comes against you and says, I think you've got cancer. Say, I think you're a liar. That's the right. Bible says, by his stripes, in the book of Peter, by his stripes, ye were and are healed. Past tense and present. I'm healed. His grace is more than sufficient to keep me against what you're trying to throw at me. That's right. God never said that you wouldn't go through problems. He just said, I'll never leave you and forsake you. And when it looks like you can't carry it, I've got you. That's right. I'll take care of you. I'll give you provision. He, right. he said, we are not in bondage of the law of sin and death anymore. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Quit walking after what the flesh says. Get the word hidden in your heart that you might not sin against God to the point when the enemy throws something at you instead of Fallen by the wayside and believing what the flesh would tell you. Say, I know what my word, Father's word says. And I know my Redeemer liveth. And he says that I'm more than conquerors through yes. Christ which strengthens me. Yes. Devil, take it to the throne. Go and falsely accuse me before the Father because he will give you the word. That's right. And believe this word. What if it doesn't happen? What if it does? Amen. That's how Jesus did it. That's he said, exactly. it is written. When Satan came to him, yes. there's all kinds of temptations, the three. Yes. And every time Jesus answered him with, it is written. And we can do the same thing. In the sixth right. verse, it says, for to be carnally minded, which is fleshly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded... It's life and peace. Amen. You know, I don't go around wondering, well, wonder if I'm going to have another heart attack. Right. Wonder if I'm going to. I don't do that stuff. Yeah. I. He said his grace is sufficient to keep me. Today. No, you go around claiming I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. God yes. healed me. And when the devil starts, I say you're a liar, Satan. That is I true. will not let the devil scare me. Right, and everybody thought that was funny of me telling my doctor that uh, I needed her to quit telling me, calling me a, di a diabetic. Yeah. But I mean it. Yeah. Because she was speaking that yeah. over me. Yes. And I was not going to allow that. I'm Be not. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject, oh my goodness, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, if you're carnally minded, God's word will not work and be effective for you because you won't allow it. That's right. You you're, have to accept it. And you're, letting, it. You're, you're letting your seed die in the wayside. That's right. 
Planted in the good That's ground. Good. This is the good ground. That's good. Renewing our minds daily. Yes. In the word. We have to do that because this is a battle. Yes. This is our sword. Yes. We have to fight Satan with the word. For, so then they which are in the flesh cannot please God. Exactly. But ye are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Right. It's like you said, didn't you? And if, a sinner, you need to repent. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Oh my, I need to stop. And not righteousness from your flesh. No, it's righteousness God. because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. That's, right. That's, That's right. when we Amen. became the became yes. the joint heir. Yes. Jesus. I had a Christian, a young Christian, that went through some things last year and she kept saying, Why does God why is God allowing this? Just horrible things, uh, job loss, this and that and the other. And I said, I don't care what it looks like. You praise God in the storm. If you're going through something today and you don't know why God's allowing this and you do belong to him, then you trust him in the storm. Right. Because I promise you, he promises yes. you will come out ahead. He will bless you for it and you will grow in Christ. But the only way we can grow is growing pains. Yes. When a child is growing up, they hurt in their arms and legs. Yes. We call it growing pains. And the Lord's going to, what is it, pure prune. Yes. He, he will be pruning us. It's going to be all right. God yes. says it will. He wrote the book, and at the end, he will. we're going to be with him. That's right. He won. The Bible said in the 11th verse real quick, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. In other words, put the deeds of the body, the flesh, the sin that was in your life, let the Spirit of God put it to death. Yes. And you'll live in Christ. Amen. And the reason I told that story about the person that told me God had failed them was because I built, I helped build their faith by teaching them the Word of God. And then all of a sudden, God turned their life around to did miraculous things financially. Yep. In every area, He will supply all yes. of their needs. Yes. And praise God. It may not come like you think it's going to, right. when yes. it's going to, right. but it's going to. And, and when it does, and when it does, this That's is what right. happens. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, guess what? They are the sons of God. Amen. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, mm -hmm. but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, we are joined heirs with Christ. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, then we may be also glorified together. Yes. Amen. 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 I've got to stop. I could, I could preach on this. Well, Brother Harwood, <laughs> invite those that want to come to the Lord to the Lord. Yes. Any if, need. If you've got, if you, if you don't have Jesus, if you turn this on and God has convicted you and you're lost, and you say, "I need, I want Jesus in my life like that." It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the sin that's in your life. He just said, "Come unto me." All ye that are weak and heavy laden, uh, the bondages of sin that's got a hold of you, and I will give you rest for your weary soul. 
All you got to do is just ask him to forgive you of your sin and to come into your life and accept him and, and uh, ask him to be your savior. I want you to pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you asking you to forgive us of all of our sin that we've committed in our entire life. You already know it. But you told us to bring it to you. And Lord, as they're asking you to forgive them today, Lord, let your grace be sufficient in their life. Let them feel your presence as they invite you into their life to forgive them of their sin. You said, if we, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, as they accept you into their heart, according to your word, they are saved. They become a new person, a new creature in Christ, a new creation. Yes. And behold, old things have passed away. Right now, they start a brand new life. And as they read your word and study your word, Lord God, be there with them and minister to the needs. In Jesus' name. You said the Spirit of God would lead and guide us into all truth, and you will help us understand this, Lord. You said it's so simple a child can understand it. Let that simpleness come to them where they understand it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to go on the air like this and win people to you and let us continue. Lord, if we can't have your spirit move in this, we don't want to do it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for being here and anointing this service. Anointing us, Lord, to deliver your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Share this. Go to YouTube under Graham's Copy Time. Yes. And like that and subscribe to it and share it because... We are in this only for the souls to yes. bring glory to God, not for money, because God supplied that. We just want to lift the name of Jesus. Amen. Sherry, we did pray for your surgery um, and that your recovery is going to be prayed for you before, probably before you tuned in. Yes. Samantha, we prayed for you too, for your God to heal you of that old COVID. And Kelly. Yes. And Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, we prayed for you. Um, Y'all let us know your praise reports too. Yes. Let us know because, you know, the Bible says that you're an overcomer by mm -hmm. the words of your testimony and uh -huh. what else. And no, what's the rest I, of that? What's the rest of that scripture? I, was, I didn't hear what you said. Listen, mm -hmm. folks. You get in this word on what we've studied. Noah, come on in, son. Yeah. We're getting ready to go off the air. We want you to, if you need us through the week, get a hold of us. Yeah. And we will we will help you in any way we can. We'll pray. We'll come and That's right. be with you. We'll spend time with you. We'll pray with you and ask God to help you in your need. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we thank you for listening. Share this. And God bless you till next week. Hit the finish button.